What's going on everyone? I didn't really have a video planned out this week to be honest. I was gonna make one obviously, but I'm kind of like last minute all of a sudden I'm like, hey, we're gonna start making the video for this week. So I'm just gonna kind of update you on some stuff that I'm doing around the house show you how the animals are doing, update you on those real quickly, and just kind of make a brief little video, uh, sort of a vlog. What I got over here are these two boards. These actually came with the house. I have the other board over there, actually. Uh, but they came with the house. They were in the laundry room as shelves, and we're going to use them as shelves again. But instead, we're going to put them on this wall. This is the wall that I'm going to have my computer. So what I want to do is have these shelves up on the wall, I'm not really sure on the placement yet. I gotta get the desk in here first, probably one up here and then the other one about here maybe. And what we'll do is we can put knickknacks, different things like that on it, but also I wanna use them mostly for house plants. I have some at home, like my cacti, stuff like that, but I don't really have a good place for them. So I was like, you know what? We gotta dedicate some cool space in this room for the plants. So that way that can open up some new avenues for the channel. And of course we're going to have a spot for terrariums. I'll show you more about that in a second. But as you saw, I had other boards that I cut. These boards, on the other hand, are for the 40 gallon paludarium rack that I have over here. Now you guys saw me build this some time ago and I know that a lot of you guys have been wondering about it, but unfortunately it had to go by the back burner just because we got a house so that took top priority. And I also thought, you know, I might as well just wait till when we move to set this up anyways, just so that way I don't have to move the tanks completely set up. And it's kind of what I did here. This is the one for the fire belly toads. And I did a pretty extensive video on this, or I should say I filmed it, I haven't edited it yet. But whenever I'm completely done with it, which should be pretty soon, I'll edit the video, we'll put the fire belly toads in here, and of course I'll put it up on the channel. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about paludariums, how to do water features, different stuff like that. This is going to be the video for you, so stay tuned. But anyways, these boards here, they're just going to go right like this on top with a little hinge, and I'll hinge up like this. We'll get something that keeps them locked when they're open. So that way it's a little bit of a cleaner design. It will hide the aquarium entirely. And you know, it would just be a cool aesthetic. So I'm gonna have to stain these along with those other boards with the shelves to match all of my furniture. But you know, it's coming together. I guess I should give a quick recap on this before we move on. This is just a 40 gallon rack, custom built of course. On top here we're gonna have Samson, my African bullfrog. I'm not really 100% sure what I'm going to do with him yet. It's going to be some sort of paludarium setup. I just don't have the idea completely locked in. But I'm less concerned about moving him into a new setup, so his is way on the back burner. On the next shelf down, of course, we have the one that I just was talking about for the fire belly toads. It's got a cool waterfall and all kinds of stuff like that. Again, you'll see that shortly. And on the last shelf down, we're gonna have MJ, my American Bullfrog. It's long overdue that we get him into a new setup, but with his, it's gonna mostly be aquatic. There will, of course, be a little bit of land area, and we'll have sticks and stuff like that, live planted, of course, but as I said, primarily water, just because he's an aquatic frog, he's gonna enjoy that, but I'm really stoked to finally get him into a new setup. It's been long overdue to get him into something new, and I'm pretty excited for that. And you may be wondering about these 10 gallon tanks down here. In here of the fire belly toads, they've been in this tank since I removed them from the 125. Uh, I didn't intend for them to be in here this long, but of course they have been since it's taken me a while to set up this 40 gallon rack. But as I said, pretty shortly they'll be moving into their paludarium. And then of course over here we have Samson, my African bullfrog. I'm not sure when you guys saw him last, or actually I showed him in the animal room update sort of recently, but he's still growing, eating, doing the same thing he always has been doing, and he's doing really well, so I am extremely excited to get him into his new setup. And moving on over from the left of the 40 gallon rack, we have my plywood vivariums. Of course, we have the two crested gecko setups up here, and then we have the 180 down underneath here. This is gonna be for uh, dart frogs, as I've said in a previous video. Not really too sure when I'm gonna get those because I do want this to grow in more and there's more plants that I wanna get. So it's probably still not gonna be for a little while, but at some point we definitely will get the dart frogs from here. But how cool does this look? Just the, the whole unit next, next to each other. Of course, I wanted them to be closer originally, but then I decided as I actually got a chance to set them up here, that I wanted to be able to stick my arm back in here and access the cords easily. So I'll probably leave some 
It's like a bit of a gap in between them, but I really like how it looks. Up top here, of course, we have the custom-built plywood bioactive vivariums. Say that five times fast for my crested geckos. On this side, we have Delilah, and then over here, we have Henry. They're both doing really well, both the geckos and the setups. Now, last time you guys saw Henry, he actually had his tail, and he had it, how long did I have him? Almost four years. He had it pretty much for that whole time, but when I was holding him, not too long after you guys last saw him in the animal room update, I sneezed as I was holding him and it must have scared him pretty bad because he went and dropped his tail. It didn't happen immediately but I put him in his cage after he got scared and I looked at him later on in the day and I'm like oh no. Like I knew that's what was happening. His tail was still on but it kind of had a tear in it and I knew immediately that's what was going on. So he ended up dropping his tail. I have it in the freezer at home and I want to preserve it in a block of epoxy but I've yet to do that, so in a future video, we'll definitely do that. Delilah, on the other hand, you pretty much never see her, but it's odd because she's always hiding, but if you manage to handle her, like get her out of the cage and handle her, she's pretty calm, whereas like Henry, he's always out, but if you handle him, he's not about it at all. He does not want to be handled. So it's kind of strange because you would expect that if she were hiding all the time, she would be less inclined to be handled than he is, Where him being out all the time but I don't know just different personalities entirely and it's kind of interesting but it's enough on them they're doing quite well then we have the 180 gallon vivarium again this one is doing quite well it's probably not doing as well as the vivariums up there just because I haven't been caring for it as much and what I mean by that is uh, as I was like during the moving process I wasn't really taking top top care of all of my setups as I typically would with this one especially because there's nothing living in it it was just like sprayed every now and again to keep the plants going and that's all i did whereas with the other setups it was like all right there's actually animals living in them so i need to make sure i feed them and i'll keep with the setups just so that way the animals are happy and healthy but with this the plants they're doing fine they're they're not going to complain with a little bit bit of neglect so it doesn't look as good as i would like it to but all the moss is growing in extremely well most of the plants are doing pretty good as well and uh, there's definitely a lot more that I want to do with it though before we stock it with some dart frogs. So gonna see that in the future and maybe I'll do an entire update on this tank and just kind of uh, doing some stuff to it. So expect that as well. And behind me here we have the 90 gallon native setup. Uh, it's lights off right now. I don't want to turn them on because it will really spook out the catfish. The night is their time to shine. So I don't want to mess with them, but I'll show you a little bit of b-roll. All the fish that are still living are doing really well. Of course, we have the two catfish. They're brown bullhead catfish. And I mean, honestly, look at that fish. If you don't think that's a beautiful fish, there is something not right with you. And of course, we have the green sunfish here. And uh, it, it was definitely scared at first because, uh, believe it or not, this was actually like the runt of the litter, so to speak. It was a small sunfish in the tank, so ironically enough, he lived through all the tragedy and he was hiding a lot like he typically would because he was a subordinate fish uh, in the hierarchy but he's out and about he got his sea legs so to speak but we're gonna have to get more natives to get a little hierarchy going again because it's not right with only one sunfish in here and on the issue that I had in last week's video where a lot of my fish had died off um, I'm sticking to that it was definitely the water clarifier uh, I talked about it down in the video, like in the comments, the video description and everything. I didn't specifically talk about it in the video because I was just kind of speaking my mind at the time and even then I knew that it had nothing to do with the fish dying off but a lot of you guys said, oh well you crashed the cycle, the beneficial bacteria died, all that kind of stuff, you had an ammonia outbreak, all that stuff. Really, it, none of that is consistent with the water tests and the readings that I was getting back. You might say, well, your kit was bunk. I tried two different kits. I was getting the same readings with both of them. Um, I was getting untraceable amounts of nitrite and nitrate, and I wasn't getting any ammonia either. So honestly, I don't think it had anything to do with that. And plus, I only moved a few streets over, so the water is, it's coming from the same source. All the parameters are gonna be consistent in that regard as well. So um, maybe the water clarifier had expired. Maybe it somehow stressed out the fish and from the move, maybe say they were stressed out from the move a little bit still. The combination of those two things, it wasn't good. 
I don't know, but the only reason I added it was because there was a little bit of a fogginess since when I set up the aquarium and I'm like, oh, uh, I could just do a water change, but maybe I'll just add this and then I'll do a water change later. And that was, honestly, that was my mistake. It, I shouldn't have done it. I should have waited. Um, I should have just done the water change and done it right, but you, you live and learn. So uh, I have since done a huge water change. You saw that in that video. And then I added carbon down in the filter just in case there were some issues with the water clarifier, which I do suspect it was. And all of that got pulled out with the water change and the carbon. Oh, that was quite a mouthful, but I, I feel like I get the point across with that. Long story short, these fish are doing well. I have three more at home that need to go in here, and then I'm gonna have to get, I don't know, three or four more. Now, of course, they're not all gonna be living in the 90 gallon forever, but none of them are that big, so it, it will suffice for a little bit. And moving on over again, we have the 125 gallon setup with Houdini in it. It's always tough, I'm always about to spit off 125 gallon for barium just because that's what it always was, but he's in here, he's hanging out, he's doing well. Um, it, it's not really that crazy of a setup, it's just your typical snake setup, mulch, decorations, fake plants, water bowl. He's over there basking under his UV light right now, he seems to enjoy that a lot, but again, not really too much to say about him. And one more thing while we're talking about this 125 gallon setup here, the aquarium itself is still good, of course the glass is not in the best of shape, however the idea that I came up with is why don't I buy another 125 gallon aquarium, take the front panel or whatever panel off of that aquarium, it's going to be good glass, right? Take this panel off, replace this panel with the good one, and put this bad panel on the other aquarium and then just turn it around. So both the front panels on the aquariums will be good and the back panels will be this tarnished whatever and we'll have two 125 gallon aquariums. Now of course we're going to have to do a racking system so I'll get rid of the stand, do a 125 gallon rack. Uh, I might be able to get three of them but I think that two is kind of the max that I want to do just so that I can have a good filtration compartment underneath and everything like that. But Eventually, I will integrate this into being my aquarium. So one of them will be the native aquarium and then uh, maybe some type of cool planted aquarium. I don't know, you guys can let me know what you think about that. None of that's happening anytime soon, but that is some kind of future thing that you can expect to see. So I figured it was worth mentioning right now. And the last animal related thing that we'll talk about real quick is my two new bettas or betas, however you like to pronounce it. I've always said beta, but honestly, beta probably is correct. But these two guys, they spoke to me. They had great personalities. They looked very healthy, so I don't, I don't know if they were new fish or what, but they looked really good. So I was like, you know what? I got to get these guys while they're good and healthy. I just have them in these bowls right here. I've been doing uh, a lot of water changes just to keep the water quality up, but we'll get them in some quality. Uh, planted aquariums and some stuff like that so if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see me do with these guys setup wise definitely let me know before I get that rolling but I might actually make the aquariums that we're going to put them in uh, I also found a fluval spec in the trash a little while ago so I might put one of them in there I don't know yet definitely uh, got some some kind of plan for these guys but I got them while I saw them because if I didn't somebody else would have got them but I like them they're pretty cool and uh, we gotta name them. What do you think we should name them? And we're here, we're back at the other animal room, the original animal room that is. I guess it's not really the original since I've been keeping animals for a really long time and I've had to move. This will be my fourth time moving with all of my animals, so it's not something I am unaccustomed to. Anyways, it's just been such a crazy process moving, moving all of my animals. There's been so many ups and downs. I want to say mostly downs, but a lot of ups as well, just because the whole thing is a very exciting thing. But man, there's just been so many setbacks. What I thought would be a two-week process ended up being longer than a two-month process because we're still not done. And I could go on and on and tell you guys all about what happened, but maybe that's a discussion we could have for another time because this video is getting kind of long but anyways i appreciate you guys i thank you for sticking in if you stuck through till the end as you saw there's a lot of stuff about to happen 
uh, with this channel. Of course, the content as of late has been kind of stagnant. Um, and I say that just because it's not really been the kind of projects you guys want to see. I know that a lot of you guys want to see the pond. I know that a lot of you guys want to see the paludariums and stuff. It's just been uh, other things had to take priority, unfortunately. But we're going to get back into the swing of things and stuff is really about to kick up. So if you're not subscribed and you're not, you know, if you're not tuned into all this stuff, you definitely want to get tuned in because there's some cool stuff on the horizon. So I'll see you guys next time. I appreciate you. Peace.